call him the Du Bois of Philadelphia. Uh, he is uh, extremely knowledgeable and well known uh, in Philadelphia for his work. Uh, and I, I will announce that he's planning the Du Bois uh, conference uh, next spring here. And uh, we, we're just really delighted for Dr. Tony Montero. And after his presentation, we're going to have a few minutes for your questions and reactions. So don't go anywhere. But listen to uh, Dr. Montero uh, at this time. Uh, Dr. Thank you very much. And um, I want to say thank you to Dr. Asante, the chairman of our department, and to all of our colleagues in the Department of African American Studies and from throughout the university. Uh, and I want to thank you all for coming out. Uh, I should say, first of all, that this is not something that I want to do. To talk about Trayvon Martin is to talk about something that is deeply painful and deeply emotional, if you care anything about humanity. But uh, often you have to speak when you don't want to speak, if for no other reason than to remind those who would murder Trayvon Martin and others that you will ultimately reap what you sow that there is a moral arc to the universe and it bends towards justice. And even though you might think that it's all over and that eventually we will forget about Trayvon Martin, I guess we're here to remind you that we won't. That the beautiful man-child, Trayvon Martin, viciously murdered twice, once by George Zimmerman and once by the so-called criminal justice system, has joined our martyrs and ancestors. He is one He's one with Oscar Grant, murdered while he was handcuffed and on the ground in Oakland, California. And I'm of the opinion that the cop that killed Oscar probably thought the death was too good for him and really wanted to paralyze him and make him live a suffering and miserable life in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Oscar Grant was murdered once in Oakland, and then he was murdered again in the courtroom, right. where the cop who killed him was sentenced to 22 months and did 11 months. <laughs> Trayvon joins Ramali Graham, chased down by New York City policemen into his grandmother's home and into her bathroom where he was killed because the cop said he thought Ramali Graham had a gun. The grand jury found that there was not enough evidence to prosecute the cop that killed Ramali Graham. Or Sean Bell, murdered by police on the night before he was to be married. No criminal record. Nobody's prosecuted, nobody did any time. Mistaken identity, they said. Ramali Graham, Sean. Bell, Oscar Grant, and Trayvon Martin join the thousands, the growing thousands of African Americans who every day experience 
extreme police brutality, murder, and beatings. They are symbols of the over one million African Americans who are imprisoned in the United States. African American men constitute less than five tenths of one percent of the human population. But one in every 12 imprisoned people in the world today is an African American man. So while Trayvon Martin, the living, breathing, aspiring human being, is now gone, Trayvon Martin is a metaphor for the new and intense level of the racial counter-revolution that began in 1877 with the overturning of Reconstruction and the pushing of African Americans back towards slavery. That long counter-revolution was only briefly interrupted in the 1960s and 70s, only to return now with a new ferocity. We are therefore in a new stage of this long counter-revolution. And thus, as a metaphor, Trayvon is but one side of this grotesque dialectic of race in the United States. To grasp the true meaning of this racial dialectic, we have to see its opposite. And that is the metaphor of Barack Obama. What is more cynical than to put a black face on a racial counter-revolution? What is more cynical by the powers that be than to put a black face on American imperialism and empire as it prepares now to go to war with Syria. And the stakes are far higher than in Iraq, Afghanistan, or Libya. Because the opposing forces are saying they're going to stand their ground. And so we must stay the hand of the war makers in this society who are identical to those who are creating the, prison, the new stage of the prison industrial complex. You know, it is a deep irony that these two metaphors collide in the same year that we celebrate the 50th anniversary of Martin Luther King's letter from a Birmingham jail. I know you didn't think I was going to say that. <laughs> because it is the letter from a Birmingham jail where Martin Luther King writes from the same place that Mumi Abu-Jamal writes from, where Martin Luther King said, without struggle, there will be no progress, that the forces of racial reaction are committed to destroying the great movement of the African American people for simple justice. For those of you who think that black people want more than they deserve, let me tell you, most black people just want white people to be decent to them. Most black people just want to be able to walk down the streets in their neighborhoods and not be harassed by police that represent the gentrifiers, be they real estate developers, universities, or other powerful institutions. Most black people would even forego complete equality just to be treated as a human being in this society. 
But Martin Luther King insisted in 19, April 1963 in response to a group of white clergymen, eight of them, six Protestants, one Catholic and one Jew, who wrote a letter saying, Martin Luther King, you will provoke racial violence. Martin Luther King, you're an outsider here in Birmingham. Let those of us who live in Birmingham settle this among ourselves. The governor of Alabama, the chief of police of Birmingham, made it perfectly clear that their intent was to crush the civil rights movement by any means necessary. And when King and Ralph David Abernathy and Diane Nash and James Bevel and others went into Birmingham, they went into Birmingham ready to die, to stand their ground. But it is the collision of the metaphor on the one side of Barack Obama, the cynical invention of a ruling elite who wishes to continue the racial order not only here in the United States, but globally. And on the other side, the metaphor of Trayvon Martin, the symbol of a generation that has no future, that has only to look forward to death, social death, imprisonment, and actual death. But in America, the dialectic has never been just two sides. The dialectics in American racial order have always had a third dimension. In other words, the dialectic operates through threes, through triads. And so, with these two opposites, there's a third factor. And it is the metaphor of Mumi Abu-Jamal. Let me explain to you what I mean. Mumi Abu-Jamal, on death row for 30 years. I feel particularly close to him because he is my homeboy. We're from the same neighborhood. We came up in the same political environment. We've debated all kinds of questions about the future of our people. Mumia has been unjustly in prison, but Mumia would not die. They could not kill Mumia. They killed Trayvon, but they could not kill Mumia. A world struggle emerged, led by this humble and beautiful woman, Pam Africa that forced them to let him off of death row. They had killed any number of black men on death row. They were leading up to Mumia. I know it as we went through this process and they killed, you know, different ones. I said, when is Mumia? When are they gonna get Mumia? They signed a death warrant for Mumia at least three times. But the movement stayed the hand of the fascist. Then, when they were forced to take him off of death row after 30 years, the reactionaries and the racists here in the city of Philadelphia called upon Mumia's fellow prisoners to kill him. In other words, they called for murder of Mumia. But what they didn't realize is that when Mumia went into general population, the prisoners say, we see a manifestation of God here. This is a special man. This is a man from whom we will learn. This is a prophetic figure. So let me end here. There are many people who say they don't see a black community. And what they are saying 
is that they don't want to look at black suffering. There are others who say that you all had a great civil rights movement and you had great leaders back then, most of whom are dead. But you black people today are undeserving of freedom. You have others who say that what is wrong with the racial order? It works for us. It's not just white people that say that. You have apologists. There's a famous law professor at Harvard University named Charles Ogletree who would argue that the racial order in the past was, was a problem, but we have made significant progress. And if you saw the so-called celebrations of the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington, which were really not celebrations as much as desecrations, what they were saying, unfortunately, is that we've come a long way, and we have a black president. And again, I say a cynical invention of a white ruling elite who want to use a black face to continue business as usual. They say this represents progress, in spite of the fact that over 80% of African Americans live in or near poverty. 20% of African Americans live in what they call deep poverty. The only thing that the majority of African Americans can pass on to their children and grandchildren is their poverty. We are not making progress. We are in the throes of a new stage of a racial counter-revolution. And the only way that we will be able to do what, it, what we are called upon to do in the name of our martyrs, we have to keep their names alive, the great Trayvon, the great Oscar Grant, the great Ramali Graham, the great Sean Bell, and on and on and on, is by standing our ground, raising up a new struggle, fighting for unity, fighting against institutions that say one thing and do the opposite. If you're about education, educate the people, tell the truth. If you're about education, you don't put profits before people. You don't put land grabs above community. If this is to be an education institution, let's infuse it with human values. And I'd like to thank my brother, and I'd like to thank all of y'all for listening to me. Thank you very much.